Good evening. Welcome to another edition of the 411 Talks on Radio Show. My name is Leon Jones. Tonight's topic, compulsive shopping is a mental disorder. Now, compulsive or pathological buying or monomania is defined as frequent preoccupation with buying or impulses to buy that are experienced as irresistible, intrusive, and or senseless. The buying behavior caused marked distress, it interferes with social functioning and marriage, and often results in financial problems. Those suffering from monomania often experience feelings of being elated after making a purchase. However, once the item is in their possession, elation wears off and depression or emptiness returns. This includes the feelings of anger for having made an unnecessary purchase. Susie Orman, who's a psychologist and a financial author of three consecutive New York Times bestsellers, including The Road to Wealth, says our emotions influence up to 80% of our financial decisions. Therefore, it is no surprise that this compulsive shopping disorder would be interwoven with feelings and emotions. Monomania is a real addiction. Now, people with this shopping disorder often cannot stop thinking about going out to shop. This cannot contain or control the wish to buy more items. What is this old joke? When the going gets tough, the tough go shopping. In actuality, the opposite is true. Monomania is compulsive, and it's also a failed attempt to cope with emotions that cannot be tolerated. For example, many years ago, a very wealthy patient would compulsively spend hundreds and thousands of dollars, whether they can or cannot afford it, as a way to chase his feelings of depression and emptiness away. As with all cases of Monomania. Nor sooner did he bring the item home, he lost interest and fell back to feeling depressed, emptied, and bored. Now, this is called a compulsive behavior because the wish to shop and make purchases is basically irresistible. Like someone who is addicted to alcohol, the individual must get out and go to the stores in order to make all types of purchases. Those with monomania often risk or fall into bankruptcy because the accumulated expenses become overwhelming and a person cannot meet their bills. Compulsive shoppers easily get themselves and their families into debt. In the worst case scenarios, people take second mortgages on their homes. When debt gets completely out of control, it is then necessarily to declare bankruptcy because compulsive shoppers spend so much money they must keep their spending secret from their husband or wife. Ultimately, there comes a day when the dismal condition of family finances comes to light. Once that happens, relationships in the divorce and families are pulled apart. This happens because the anger and sense of betrayal are very powerful. In some ways, monomania is connected to hoarding. Purchases are repetitively made of items that the person already has. By and large, these things are stored and not used when they are home. For instance, many types of watches, pocketbooks, or shoes may be purchased. However, once home, they're put in a drawer or a closet along with the other watches, never to be seen or worn again. Why? Because they're collecting dust. Then purchases can pile up, much like what happens with a hoarder. Now, in this case, the full emphasis is on shopping and buying. At the very same time, there is a tendency for the shopper to keep the purchases a secret from friends and family. It has been found that 1% to 6% of the population suffers from this illness. Among those, 90% are female. The causes are not clear. Now, some experts believe the source of the problem lies in some form of a neurological disorder. Other suggestions are there may be a correlation between having been abused or unloved during childhood and developing this disorder. While it may seem to loved ones as though this destructive behavior is deliberate, but it's not, this is a real illness in which people are driven to do things over which they have no control. 
Now help is available. Research is being done on what causes this illness as well as what are the best ways to go out helping people. It is possible to get treatment for monomania. At present, this consists of CBT, cognitive behavioral therapy, and or antidepressant medication, especially Lovix. If you or anyone you know might be suffering from this illness, please seek help from a clinical psychologist who uses cognitive behavioral ther therapy. Now, if necessary, your psychologist can refer you for medication treatment. Now, when it comes to shopping, it does not surprise me that the majority of your compulsive shoppers are female. I know my mom would do that to make her feel better. And when you go and purchase any item with money that you don't have, why are you doing it? Basically, you're doing it to make yourself feel better. However, when you go out and buy something that you don't need and you bring it home and it collects dust, you go back into the feelings of boredom, anxiety, and depression. Why? Because you didn't need the item, but you were addicted to shopping. And believe it or not, some people might think this is a joke, but there are a lot of people in this country. And again, I told you between 1% and 6%. That's still a lot of people. When you are compulsive about anything, particularly shopping, you're an addict. And usually addicts do not admit when they have a problem. I've never heard shoppers admit that they have problems. This is why, and I'm not picking on a female gender, but why is it that they have so many shoes, so many clothes, so many pocketbooks that they don't need? What are they trying to do? And if you look at it, at the end of the day, they don't have anything to show for it but a bunch of material items that are going to sit in their closet to collect dust. And when it comes to money, they're constantly working harder and harder, not smarter and smarter, to make sure that they continuously buy these material items. Certainly, it is a disorder because it is an addiction. And besides cognitive behavioral therapy and Lovix, known as the medicine to try to help the symptoms, basically what you need when you are a compulsive shopper, you need discipline. Now, one thing that I urge everybody to do, and this is what I do when I go grocery shopping, so I don't become compulsive with buying items that I don't need. And I'm using a grocery store as an example because it is very easy to do. I eat before I go grocery shopping and then I write a list of all the items that I need and I stick to the list. That way, I don't go over the budget that I set for myself and I don't buy more than what I need. I buy just enough to last me through the time more or less a month or two months before I'm ready to go grocery shopping again. In fact, the best thing that I do with grocery shopping is I go to places such as Costco and Sam's Club and buy in bulk. Why? Because in the long run, it's going to save me more in money. It's going to save me more in gas because that's less trips that I have to take to the grocery store. Now, when individuals are compulsive, what well, other costs do take into effect? How much gas are you spending when you go to the grocery store or when you go buy shoes or when you go buy pocketbooks? Are you going out to eat while you're shopping? I guarantee you're doing that as well. In fact, when it comes to the female gender, when I would go over some dating profiles, four items I would see in their profiles were actually five. I would see church, shopping, dining out, traveling, and plays. Well, you can exclude church, but the other four, number of females become very compulsive. It's funny how some of them would mention in their dating profiles that they like to go on cruises every year and shopping, when a number of them 
don't have a lot of money to pay their own bills. How are they getting the money? I'm not saying they're stealing the money or writing bad checks. They're working hard for the money, but the bottom line, they could be borrowing money from family members because the money that they're making, they're throwing it away on shopping. Now, do men compulsively shop? Some of them do as well. But the bottom line, monomania, which is compulsive shopping, is a disorder. And what you're doing, you're basically going shopping to make yourself feel good by buying items to avoid what your real issues are. That's the same way when you have a problem, you go to the bar, you try to drink it away. Well, what happens when you drink it away, the problem doesn't go away, you just incur another problem. The problem may be temporary, but being temporary as it is, it's called a hangover, although it lasts for a short amount of time, that hangover can lead into a headache, it can lead to vomiting, it can also lead to the hospital. But if that happens while you're drinking, the other problem is still there. So how do you contain compulsive shopping? Again, it's about discipline. Now, since it is classified as a mental disorder, cognitive behavioral therapy will help. But you know what I found out when it comes to any mental health issue, when it comes to medicines, some of these disorders haven't had any real studies or research. So what's the purpose of taking medicine? Well, the purpose of medicine is to relieve the symptoms, but medicine really doesn't relieve the symptoms unless you take enough of it. And over time, medicine gets very costly. So a real way to really alleviate any addiction is support groups. Find people who have gone through the same problems that you're going through. They can talk you through it and they can give you much better insight. Why? Because they're sharing their experience on what happened. Addiction of any kind can break up families and it's also going to hurt how you as an individual function in life. The bottom line, if you have a disorder, admit that you have a disorder, seek help. See, a number of us are too proud to seek help because we don't believe we have a problem. And some people believe that shopping is not a problem. I beg to differ. I know it's a problem. It's a problem because individuals who are compulsive at shopping may seem happy on the outside. But when you buy items and you bring them home and they just sit there and collect dust, and you know they're collecting dust, because the tags are still on the items. They're brand new. And I know with women's clothes, women have a multitude of styles that they can utilize when it comes to dressing. So there may be times where a woman might only take a pocketbook out once or twice a year. And that just depends on the function. But do you have to have so many shoes? Do you have to have so many clothes? Do you have to have so many pocketbooks? No. The bottom line of what you're trying to do is make yourself feel good. But basically, if you go buy an item you think you want at that particular time, and once you get it, you bring it home with you, and then reality kicks in 
and a trigger me mechanism goes through your mind and you say, wow, I shouldn't have bought this item. You feel bad. Now, let me tell you something that you can do. If you go and buy an item and you didn't really want it, keep the receipt, take it back, and get your money back. That's the first step. That's the most realistic part of discipline that you could have. Number two, if you have family members and you're a compulsive shopper, give someone the keys. Number three, write down what you need, not what you want. Number four, if the first three fail, then you got to seek help. Why? Because that means your shopping has gotten out of hand and you need support. And that support is going to come from people such as a support group or cognitive behavioral therapy to help solve the issue. Because if you don't get the problem of compulsive shopping solved, you're going to lose everything you own. That's just like compulsive gambling, drug and alcohol addiction, sex addiction. They all point in the same direction to depression, anxiety, suicide, strokes, high blood pressure, and heart disease. Believe it or not, it's best to take care of monomania or compulsive shopping before you go into a state of heart disease or strokes and stress. Why? Because they win your life quickly. So I want all of my audience to do a favor for themselves. If you know someone who's a compulsive shopper, leave a comment in the comment section and let me know what you did to help that compulsive shopper. Because in the long run, these retail venues don't care about you. They care about the money that you're giving them. And if you're broke, you're only one customer. They have thousands that come in on a daily routine shopping spree. And what does that mean? That means more and more money for that retailer, especially at Christmas time. But save yourself and save your money and become a disciplined shopper not a compulsive shopper. Buy what you need instead of what you want all the time. Because if you buy what you need, you're going to use it in a much better fashion than you buy what you want. And if you buy what you need, you can stretch your money. If you buy what you want, you just throw your money away. With monomania, and compulsive shopping is not a joke. It can ruin your life. So if you have a problem with compulsive shopping, take the first step. Admit you have a problem, then seek help. Because at the end of the day, you live one time. And if you have loved ones, you want to keep your family intact. Compulsive shopping and any other disorder will destroy your relationship with your family. Also, it would destroy your relationships at work, school, or any other place you have people who have been supporting you and your goals and objectives before you became compulsive in your shopping. So... Discipline yourself before you become a compulsive shopper. 
Because if you're educated now and you look at the consequences of spending your money, you will be able to function much better in life instead of being under duress with stress. Because when you're a compulsive shopper, what happens? You buy now and you pay later. And that's my commentary for this edition of the 411 Talk Zone radio show. For this evening, the last day of July. Wow, 2017 has gone very fast. In fact, football season starts with the preseason. The Dallas Cowboys and the Arizona Cardinals start this Thursday, I believe, the first preseason game. But today is Monday, July 31st, 2017. You can tune in to the 401 Talk Zone radio show every Saturday from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. on Ball Talk Radio. Guest call in number is 215 383 5785. If you like my videos, please share and subscribe to the 401 Talk Zone radio show right here on YouTube so I can continue to give you quality information for educational purposes from a professional and mature perspective. Now, on this channel, I don't engage in emotional topics, debates, or social topics, nor do I participate in drama and or unnecessary bickering. Why? Because it is counterproductive. What I do on my channel is teach. And what I teach is how you can survive in the tough real world by giving you the tools that are going to help you make better decisions because the real world is tough. If you are sent out there with no tools, you're going to struggle and you may end up being a compulsive shopper. So all the information that I talk about is researched by me and I give you my own personal experiences so you don't make the same mistakes that I did. So that being said, the information that I provide is positive, but it's also realistic. Because the more knowledge you have, the more power you have. Also, if you have a business and you have a topic that you want me to do on YouTube or Blog Talk Radio, and you start up a new YouTube channel, I will shout you out on the air, whether it's on my Blog Talk Radio show or YouTube channel. But you have to email me at lej6521 at gmail.com. And if you have a comment, please leave your comment in the comment section under the video. But make sure that your comments are pithy. No bloviating, pettifogging, or filibustering if you wish to opine. And that's it for this video. Till next time, my name is Leon Jones. Remember, please be gentle and respectful to each other. And have a wonderful and blessed night. God bless you. Good night.